What's up guys? We got Donovan's 2001 Subaru Outback. We've been working on this thing for about a month or so. Uh, and Donovan's been out having fun with it in Central Oregon, out in the middle of nowhere, beating the crap out of the thing. Uh, and actually today, you won't be hearing my annoying voice because the master himself is going to step out from behind the camera and show us a little bit around his car. Okay, so I came out from behind the camera and today we're going to be walking, kind of, we're just going to walk front to back through everything that we've been doing with and working on this car. So at the very front here, we had, uh, we, I needed some extra lighting for the nasty roads I drive on when it gets dark out and everything. And so the most helpful thing that I've had so far is these big hella lights. I went ahead with the amber lights because they help you see in the fog and the rain a little bit better. And Remy, you're blocking the shot. Thank you. Um, and these things really have saved me so far. I've driven home and through the snow and stuff where it's just almost impossible to see the lines on the road. These things have been awesome. And of course, a little, I don't know what that is, 12 inch light bar. It just brightens up the trail a little bit more. Uh, so if we go around, see, there's not anything special going on in the engine. Um, we just did maintenance stuff, uh, timing belt, all that fun stuff. Um, let's see, I guess kind of in the engine bay though. We went ahead and went with a, a two inch spacer lift, which I'll cut some footage in. Um, it's just an eBay spacer lift. They're aluminum spacers and haven't had any issues with them so far. Uh, while we were doing it, we put in new struts and uh, one inch wheel spacers. So the, the tire that I went with is the Cooper Discoverer AT34S. Um, the reason I went with it is because uh, it was probably like 50 or 60 bucks cheaper per tire than the BFG KO2s. And I've had KO2s before and they're great tires, but I wanted to try something a little bit more affordable, especially since I was buying five of them and not just four of them. Um, and so far they've been great. They're severe weather rated, so they're technically a traction tire that you can use um, in the snow when you're required to have chains and stuff. And uh, I haven't had any issues with them so far. They've held up great. The traction's been good. They're fairly nice on the road. Um, going with the skinnier tire made the car a little bit more skittish over um, uneven pavement, but uh, that's what you get with a narrower tire. These are 215, uh, are they 75? No, 215, 70, 16s. Uh, the factory size was 225, 60. So these are just slightly under an inch taller um, sidewall. And uh, just otherwise your lift is kind of pointless if you don't put a taller tire on it. Uh, the wheels are just stock Outback wheels that I painted black with appliance epoxy and it's just a rattle can stuff but it, it dries on really hard and it's been really tough. I've been driving this thing over rocks, sticks, grinding these things over tree stumps and things like that and there's only a couple little spots where the, the paint has flaked off and it's inside the wheel wells or the, the lug nut sockets where the coating probably wasn't very good. So I've been pretty happy with that and it looks good when it's not dirty. Okay, right, so on top of this thing, I put a, a leader roof basket, uh, the leader brand, L-E-A-D-E-R. Um, kind of an off brand, but it was fairly affordable. It was like 140 bucks on Amazon, something like that. And it's pretty long. I don't think I could get much bigger of a rack on here. And uh, it's been pretty good. Uh, so on, on top of the basket, uh, we mounted these two Rotopacks fuel cans they're three gallons each so each one gets me maybe an extra 60 70 miles or so in range uh, the these things are pretty cool they're not super cheap but I found these used on Facebook and they came with the, the locking mounts so you can't just pop these off and steal them without the key and I also have my full-size spare because once you put bigger tires on it your original spare is completely useless you can't use it so I still have some space up here for some stuff. I'm not sure what I'll put up here. I was thinking about putting like an ATV kind of bag or something to put camp chairs or something in, but I haven't really needed this space, but I like having it open should I need to throw anything up here, like a garbage bag or something from when I'm camping. So I do travel with the dog pretty much everywhere. And so one of the things I was concerned with was the heat in the car. This car does have AC and I do have an extra key so I can leave the air conditioning running for her if I have to leave her in the car to go in somewhere. But I also needed some extra privacy for when I'm, when I'm sleeping or whatever. 
and so I went I had the windows tinted with ceramic tint which rejects the heat it's not just the color I did a 15% tint in the back and the front windows have uh, 30 uh, which you can't tell right now because the windows rolled down so now let's go to the inside of the car and work our way back on the interior so we haven't changed too much to like the driver's side of the car really um, we just have the switches for the lights up front mounted up there they're they're wired up independently so they don't come on with my headlights or anything I or the the high beams I didn't want it like that so this one is just the control for the the fog lights and this is for the light bar and that's pretty much it right here I have uh, phone mount magnetic phone mount and uh, mount for my action camera and uh, everything else is kind of on this side of the car so on the passenger side it gets a little bit more interesting I completely removed the passenger seat and threw it away because it's just me and the dog and I don't need a passenger um, so I made this little box it's not like the fanciest thing ever but it definitely comes in handy for some storage stuff I have my axe here an umbrella here this well, I'll talk about the box first. Um, inside each of these these little lids, I have a thing. This is where I keep my camera bag and my, my day pack and a couple other little things. And then on the other side, I have some plastic storage totes that have, you know, like bathroom supplies and camping supplies in there. So I have uh, a camera mount mounted on this side. So if I'm filming myself when I'm driving or something, I can just mount that camera right here. I Velcro my, my battery chargers here and this is just a Bluetooth speaker that I bought instead of using or buying a new stereo. I just play my music through that thing. So this this whole setup is uh, a little bit extreme for any kind of camper Subaru but this is my my dual battery system. Um, basically it's it's an auxiliary battery that lets me charge my batteries, my laptop, my phone, uh, anything else that I plug into the inverter without risking draining the starting battery. So it isolates the cranking battery from the auxiliary battery. So no matter how much I use this battery and drain it down, I'll always be able to start the car in the morning. So inside this battery box, I have a, a 92 amp hour Duracell deep cycle AGM battery. Um, the reason I went with AGM is because they're, they're really safe, really stable. Um, they have good performance and uh, there's when they're charging they don't vent hydrogen unless it's being overcharged which means several things along this line would would have to fail before that thing started overcharging so just in case of that ever did happen I you can't really see it because it's tucked behind here but I have a vent tube running through the firewall and into the engine bay and uh, this so this device right here is a it's a DC to DC charger and essentially what it does is it it isolates the two batteries it controls the charging to the AGM battery because AGM batteries have a specific charge profile that they need to properly charge fully and this thing allows you to do that quicker and more efficiently than if you just tapped into the alternator and had it trickle charge that way um, the nice thing about this thing too is it also has an input for a solar panel so if I wanted to put a solar panel up on the basket or on the roof or something you can just run wires directly into here and it controls the solar panel and it'll switch between the alternator charging or the solar panel charging depending on what's more efficient at the time. So coming off of uh, out of the battery I have it hooked up to this inverter and uh, it has several USB ports and some 110 outlets for the laptop and everything and uh, yeah it's a bit of an extreme system for a Subaru but um, I it figured it would come in handy so this is like really heavy wire for the application you don't really need this thick of wire but it's kind of what we had on hand and so I used it um, the nice thing is uh, one of the safety features that you have to put in line is a 30 amp fuse um, but what I decided to use was a 30 amp circuit breaker instead so you can just uh, trip the circuit breaker or reset it if uh, you want to disconnect the, the cables and you don't want to have a hot lead you can just trip the breaker and then it um, cuts the power so you don't have a hot terminal end on one side of the battery or not and there's also another one of these on the battery side inside the engine compartment. So as you can probably tell, 
this spot right here is the dog spot. This is dog zone. Um, what I ended up doing here is I actually removed the actual bench part of the rear seat and I uh, just have her dog bed here and another pillow so it's kind of comfortable for her. Another cushion right here. Um, and we'll show you a, get a better view later but underneath the dog bed there's another one of those little storage boxes that has her dog stuff a dog coat food bowl some medicine or stuff like that and uh, of course she has her toy subaru what do you say creature can you get up so we can show people stuff okay so, so as you can see, you see here i usually keep her leash either just tucked right here by the floor or inside the, the center console. But you can see, I just, this is the storage box. I have a couple first aid kits right here. Nice blood stopping kit, keep bug spray and sunscreen and that kind of stuff right there. Um, her doggy poo bags are just hanging here from uh, my curtain rod. So one more thing I did to battle the heat and get a little bit more privacy was I installed these uh, thermal curtains, which I actually just had laying around. And I have them kind of secured with these rubber gear ties. Uh, the, the curtain rod, or what I used for a curtain rod, was just some like 3 16th, 3 16th steel cable and just self-tap screwed them to some conduit clips up into the plastic trim here. And uh, if you undo these things, of course I put the, the dark side on the outside. So you just close the curtains and then have some privacy. So there's quite a few interesting things going on back here. Um, this is basically when I leave, how nice and organized it is. It typically doesn't stay this way, but basically I got a body pillow here just to be extra comfortable normal sleeping pillow and my thermo rest big thick sleeping pad so that keeps it comfortable so up top in my this cargo net that i have stretched across the most of the roof of the back of the car i have a nice rei camp chair that's pretty small stays nice and compact my sleeping bag which is an, again an rei sleeping bag and then i keep an extra blanket. This is usually for the dog. I just kind of wrap her up in it when she can't really fit under my sleeping bag with me. Let's see. So right here I have this thing which is pretty cool. Come in a little bit closer. This is uh, just a, a Lucy brand um, solar lantern and it just has a little solar panel on top and it you charge it up or it charges itself up and it's just a nice lantern and it's typically for backpacking, it collapses and you blow it up through this little air valve, but honestly, I don't think I've ever had this thing die on me. It's always had a charge, and I've left it in a backpack for over a year, pulled it out, and it still had a charge. So this thing is awesome, like 25 bucks. It's definitely worth it. So I'll go ahead and pull this stuff out to make it a little bit easier to show you guys. What else is going on back here? Okay, so right here, this is a like a gallon and a quarter water jug. I like it because it's fairly small and typically it's pretty easy to find a place to fill up water. So only having a gallon and a little over a gallon is not too bad. It's enough for cooking, enough for the dogs drinking water, enough for me to drink out of for at least a couple days. Unless we're in a really hot place. So this right here, this is my camp stove. It's just a little butane stove. It has its own little box. Uh, not the fanciest thing in the world, but it works pretty good. Boils water, cook on it, all that fun stuff. Um, this thing's a little bit weird, but it's another thing I had a little handy Nick here help me with. This is actually a, a stand for my tabletop, which I can show you in here. So in, under this little hatch, these this year Subaru has a nice like storage set up here. And so this table, I'll just show you for the sake of showing you right now with it still open, has a little hole in it. And this right here is just a little quick release bicycle seat clamp. You just pop that on there, pop the clamp on there, and grip it down like that. And then I have this little leg to support it here. And so I'll set my cook stove on this to cook with. 
So I also in here I have a little knife that I can use for, for cooking. I keep some food in here, some snack bars, some of these little shelf stable milks. So they're kind of nice. They're like the perfect amount if you just want to have a bowl of cereal or granola or something. Uh, just a simple fry pan, a little spatula to cook with. And this is my shower hose actually. And I'll show you that right now. One thing that I'm actually pretty happy with and it's really nice to have is uh, my shower setup. And this thing cost me like 25 bucks. So inside here is where the, the Subaru has its auxiliary uh, power socket. And so I leave the car running. I don't have this hooked up to my auxiliary battery yet just because it's kind of a pain to run wires all the way through the car. So if I want to take a shower or spray off the dog or myself, do some dishes or something, I just have to turn the key on. I, I usually start the car when I do it um, and plug this in and you can flip this little switch and that's a little 12 volt pump. This little hose, I drop it into the mouth of that little one gallon bucket or container that I showed you guys earlier. I just feed that in there and it sucks the water in through here. And this thing is a simple quick connect, typical garden sprayer type of thing. And then this end connects to that side of the pump. And so it sprays at like a little over hundred PSI. And it's not uncomfortable to shower yourself with, but you can do some dishes, spray off the car, clean yourself. Um, I also have some little bit of Velcro on here so I can stick it right there and have a little bit of a shower. And then underneath all this stuff, you can pull this foam out. This is just where I keep all my, can you see in there? This is where I keep my tool bag and recovery gear and emergency stuff. This is a little flat snow shovel, toe straps and that sort of thing. Keep it. So I keep that, I keep all that stuff down there. I figure I had enough weight on my roof. I don't want to add all my tools and stuff into the basket. So it stays down low. When it's time to go to bed, this is essentially the process. So I'll take the little dog pillow and kind of just set it up in the back. The dog bed, I set it up on the box for the moment. And this little cushion I can take out and I'll show you what I do with that later. And this pillow goes back down here to level the seat back because otherwise it droops pretty far. So I keep this thing under the spot where my head goes, flip this one down, put the dog bed back right here. And then actually usually when I'm traveling I have my, my little suitcase of clothes and I actually wedge that right here to fill this gap. Then I take my pillows and I'll typically wrap the body pillow, kind of tuck it into where the door is right here to make it more comfortable. But for now, I'll just stick it right here. Then my normal pillow goes right here. And then my, my thermo rest, I kind of wedge under here and roll out the long ways. And then this is kind of where I lay. Remy sleeps right here next to me. So this cushion that I took out from here, this is just like a patio, outdoor patio cushion. Um, when it comes time to sleep or if it's kind of hot out, I just use, since I only have curtains on the side, I put these two bungees right here and I just fish this cushion up here into the window. And it acts as privacy and it's also nice and thick so it blocks out any heat if it's like the middle of the day. All right, so this is pretty much home. This is how I sleep. I'll have my sleeping bag um, and I'll, I unzip it all the way and then I just kind of open it up and lay it on top of both of us. Sometimes if she's being a bed hog, that's when I break out that little blue blanket and I wrap her up in it. But from right here, I can reach my lantern, swing this thing closed, and if I'm lucky enough to have cell service, I might pop on a movie and actually stick it up in my bungee cords right here and just lay back and watch a movie. And so I'll usually have my phone right here, like I said, if I'm lucky enough to have a movie or sometimes I'll just set it there and fall asleep to an audiobook or something. And then I can hang my keys like that. And usually I'll just tuck my wallet up here, or up in the glove box or something, or not the glove box, but the center console. And so this is pretty much home. And uh, of course I 
crack the windows to get some ventilation. So that's pretty much everything that I have done to it so far. The only other thing that I'm seriously considering adding to it, actually there's two things, uh, but one thing I want is an awning, either make some kind of way to extend an awning off of the hatch here. So just so I can have some more walking around space. If the weather's bad, it, it kind of sucks to just be stuck inside that little car. So having an awning off the side or off the back would be nice to just have a little bit of extra moving around room if the weather's bad. So, and then the only other thing that I, I really need to add, and we've ran into this a couple times on our last trip out and a couple of the times I went out, on a really rough road, I tend to overheat my transmission. So I need to add an external transmission cooler to help battle that because, you know, half hour, 45 minutes of driving on really, really bad forced roads and stuff, and these automatic transmissions start to overheat. So thanks for checking out this video, guys. This is uh, pretty important to us because this is kind of the end of a chapter for tire side and the beginning of a chapter for Donovan because Donovan has decided to go off and do his own thing. He's gonna be doing a bunch of traveling and a lot of super exciting camping with this car. Uh, on his own, he's gonna just take off and and go and see where the road takes him. So you guys ought to check him out on his new channel. Uh, is Donovan Thurman on YouTube. Donnie Dispersed on the web, for the website and Instagram. Check it out and if you guys have any questions about his car, uh, leave drop some comments in the video. Let us know what you think guys. But uh, thanks for checking it out.